Hi, I'm Maggie. Hi, I'm Grace. Hey guys, welcome back to episode 69 of the podcast. You would think today would be a spicy episode. It's not. We're already having technical difficulties. I'm not at my apartment. I'm in my old bedroom. If you are watching on YouTube and you've been watching for a while and you've seen me when I lived with my parents, this is my old bedroom and it is completely empty, which is not sad at all to me, but maybe sad to like my parents and stuff. But it's been empty for like a year and a half now, so nothing different. But um, yeah, today's episode is going to be, we have some announcements to make. And then we also, I mean, our, our listeners are kind of going to get like a early sneak peek of uh, something that's dropping. And then we're going to talk today about reviewing books. Because Grace and I are both technically bookish influencers. <laughs> We're supposed to be writing reviews, but contrary to popular belief, we don't, do ever, do that. We don't ever do that. But so today we're just going to talk a little bit about that. Um, talk about our current reads at the moment and kind of catch up. The last two weeks we have been on a hiatus because I literally had COVID and mm-mm. And then I was in Omaha without Wi-Fi. And yeah. Yeah. I moved I moved to a new apartment unit. So I got I'm getting a new desk and I'm gonna get a whole new setup for my what is this? Um yeah, I'm getting like a whole new desk set up, a bigger desk. Um, so that I'll be able to keep my lights and everything so I won't have to move anything. Um Mm -hmm. I'll just have to move my laptop and not my whole freaking camera and everything. So that's also why I look busted is because I'm not, I'm using a different camera. But today so. we're going to talk about a couple things. <laughs> this like half the episode is just going to be me ranting and making excuses <laughs> exactly. and Grace just looking like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. I, I know this already. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I've been dealing with this for almost two years now. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah. It's it's almost been uh, so. I think it has been two well, years. We're, it's been two years. No, it hasn't. When's our anniversary? Uh, Is it not bookish, June sixth? My bookish anniversary was July. Okay. So our friendship anniversary is in July, end of July. Okay. Maybe. Not me going back to TikTok to scroll back through all of our DMs to see how long. It's almost two years, though. Yeah, it's been a while. Mm. That's weird. Mm, That's weird. Anyways, (laughs) so reviews. Book reviews. As readers, as book um, lovers, we usually are supposed to um give reviews to things you know let people know how we felt about things you know if you're an amazon purchaser you know you give your reviews on things mostly on the things that you don't like if you use yelp if you use google maps whatever you leave a review you're supposed to most of us do not we don't uh we usually leave bad reviews if any um or extremely extremely good ones and i feel that the middle ones usually get left out. And with book reviewers, we are the very, very much the same. Um, we, I personally, used to review my books on Goodreads often. I had a, like a whole phase of like reviewing them and being super, super detailed with them. Um, and then after a while, I just got so tired of doing that. It's hard to keep up with that because like as soon as you finish a book, your your main thing is not like, oh, let me go write like a quick paragraph review, you know? Mm-hmm. That's not what you want to do. I mean, and for then some later people on, it is. I mean, for, some, for people. some people it is. But for me, that's not it. That's not it. And then especially like, you're like, oh yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait to review it later <laughs> on. And then later on, you just don't feel like reviewing that book anymore. You don't feel the same, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, 
I I review if like an author I'm part of an author's like review team and I get an arc um like I'm part of Tate James um she does like all the reverse harems she sends me arcs and so I'll usually do like I'll put out a video for that because I love her books and I love those series and stuff or like Savar Miller I'm on her arc team and stuff um and so like if I get an author who sends me a book and is like hey like if you're interested like here's an arc um here's the release date and like or if like i signed up with like valentine pr or something like that like that's when like i feel like it's more of an obligation to do it and that's part of like that influencer job but i feel like with books if i post about a book that's how you know i liked it enough like i'm not i don't read reviews like I know people who like will not buy a book unless they've read a couple of reviews. I hate reading reviews because I just hate going into it, knowing what's going to happen and like knowing other people's perspective on it. So that's why my, I always like to say, I give the vaguest reviews. So it gives you some semblance of what's happening. And so that's how I review. And like, I'll do it like on Amazon for like arcs and stuff Mm -hmm. because I'm required to. But like, I don't, or like, if I really like a book and I'm like, everybody has to read this, I'll put a review out on Goodreads. Um, mm-hmm. But mostly I just like update my Goodreads as like what I'm currently reading and like the page numbers. And I'll do like a little snippet of my thoughts. And that's mainly what I do with like reviewing books. And then like, well, now. Now when I'm reviewing books, and though they are few and far in between, but most of the time when I am reviewing now, I want to know certain things going into the book. Certain things meaning I want to know what trope I'm going into, mm-hmm. what's the type of dynamic, um, any other types of tropes going in. Because now, um, being mood readers, as we talked a while back ago on it, it's Essentially, I want to pick up a book based on the vibe that I want in that moment. You know, I may have a book that I was like really, really excited about. I, um, I've been waiting for it for like months, you know, and that's, that's super great. Right. And then it finally comes out, but then I'm not feeling that vibe anymore. I don't want to read, you know, friends lover romance right now. I want workplace rivals i want you know a ceo billionaire i don't want mafia right now i want taboo i don't want you know brother's best friend you know all of those things so i feel like reviews now if they have tropes it's easier to zero in on picking up your next read those reviews are really what i'm looking for the rest of the stuff not really but if something is problematic in a book or if something uh, like a certain trigger comes up in a book and it wasn't handled correctly or it was handled correctly, I would like to know about that in the review. Um, but the most of most of the rest of the stuff, it's just like, yeah, it was a good book. It was fun. Dynamic was cute. Rom- romance was okay. Okay. All right. I guess that's yeah. good. I don't really care about that. Yeah, I'm looking at my Goodreads and the last book that I reviewed was Book Lovers and I was sent the arc for that. Mm-hmm. Um, Berkeley sent me the arc for that and then the other one was uh, 400 first kisses or like oaths and omissions and I always put that at the beginning I'm like 18 plus I put the stars amount the spice amount and I put tropes that were like the main tropes and then I put some trigger warnings so like if you are looking at a review and you're just like I want those like I just need to know what's in here and stuff the main points that's all I need to see that's why I do that and also like going back and like looking at like, oh, what books have these like tropes and stuff? I can go look through Goodreads and it's all listed as the first thing within my review. And then I kind of go into it, but yeah, I don't know. There's like, I don't know. Some people put so much effort into reviews and I commend them because yeah. I could never, like I know I could never be able to do that. Yeah, because like for me, it's like, <sighs> I don't know. It feels like, you know, back in school when you had to give like an analysis on a book. Oh, yeah. 
And I'm like, I'm not trying to do that. I'm really not trying to do this. I'm not reading for my mental development. Mm -hmm. I'm reading this to feel good. It's a pastime and an enjoyment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm really not trying to, but I will say this. Uh Goodreads reviews are the ones that you're reading you're reviewing to help the author. Yeah. Right. Um and if you review on on Amazon for like Kindle Unlimited books or any other books mm-hmm. that you have purchased on Amazon. Um, those reviews help the authors tremendously. They are really, really good for them. If you really want to help out an author, if you really enjoyed their book, great places to do your reviews there. And um, it helps because oftentimes if you're like trying to get on like a PR team, you're trying to get books sent to you for reviews and things like that. Oftentimes they'll look at your Amazon profile. Mm -hmm. Excuse me your Amazon profile and they'll look at it to see what reviews you have been leaving and to see if you are actively sending out reviews or if you're just like getting things and not reviewing them at all. Because most of these people, these publishing houses, they'll want to send books to people who will review it so that other people can get into it, into the book, right? So if you do are interested in keeping up to date with like having publishers reach out to you, you want to keep up to date with your reviews, with your NetGalley, with your Amazon review list. Because if you don't, these reviewer, these publishing houses will be like, well, why are we going to send her a book? It's just going to get tossed in her pile and it's not ever going to get reviewed and it's never going to get anywhere. So we're just sending them this book for nothing. Literally yeah. me. Literally me. Because and, I'm a and, mood reader. Yeah. Like I'll read it like three months later. I won't read it immediately. I at least try to read it in a, in a, sometimes a reasonable amount you know <laughs> and that's that like recently i got sent on rotation by charlene obuobi i'm probably butchering the last name by avon i did not request it i didn't request it but not, but it was sent to me as an arc and i'm like okay cool but it, I, I didn't request it and that's fine because like, you know, sometimes publishers will send you books and that's great. Um, but sometimes you're not, you're not looking to review it and that's fine. But the books that you are looking to review, review them and how about your author because how about that book? Because it, it does work and it does help out. And this is another note. If you're reading on Kindle Unlimited, which I feel like most romance readers are, if you're on Kindle Unlimited, keep this in mind your author of that book they get they get paid per page read meaning if you dnf at like 40 pages those 40 pages they got paid for okay now if you uh like you only they only get paid the one once read through so if you're reading it for the first time, yeah, read it on Kindle Unlimited and turn to the like the from the title page to the last page on the end, that last, last page. Make sure to go through every single of those little buffer plate pages, the pages of the table of contents, the, the dedication, the, um, the copyright page, all of that. Go through all of that because your author does get, that's how they create income, you know? And if you want to read that book again, go ahead and, and purchase it. And when you, re- when you um, review after Kindle Unlimited, you know, it'll pop up, mark as finished or whatever, if it's connected to your Goodreads. Right there, if you go ahead and put a review in there really, really quickly, that review will get posted to Amazon and to Goodreads. So that's two birds and one stone, you know? And it's not that hard. It's really easy. Now, for my audiobook listeners, for audiobook listeners, if you are reviewing your audiobooks, make sure that you do so because it really does help. Audiobooks are very, very expensive to create because you're not just paying the author, you're paying the narrator, you're paying the producers, the directors of that. So it's a lot, it's a different process when it comes to like payment and things like that. And we want to create income for these people because we want to, you know, it's an entertainment business and, and they're going to stop doing things if we don't end up like helping them out 
we help them by enjoying their content i mean you know? especially now people who have kindle unlimited and like i mean i can't be the one to talk i literally have had kindle unlimited for the whole like year and i barely read any kindle unlimited books because i've been trying to read physical books and i'm a mood reader and i don't my kindle's all the way in omaha at the moment so like mm. i literally don't have it with me but i technically could read on my phone i know that but like especially now when like you can't buy books but in instead of buying like a book a month you can buy kindle like a kindle unlimited subscription and like obviously this is like s people who have that disposable income to do that mm -hmm. because sometimes ten dollars is a lot um and so if you do have that disposable income and like making sure that like yeah if you dnf it okay at least like just scroll through and just let them um just yeah. do it and then they're good to at least it gives them some revenue especially we're about to i mean i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say we're about to go into a russia recession but inflation is that is that a very high right now and the stock market is going down so it's like things are going to get more expensive and so if you're able to contribute that way at least you can just scroll through to the end of the book unless it's a problematic author <laughs> unless yeah. the book is like that puppet master one <laughs> pawn in the puppet oh god that that book was uh i i read the trigger i read i think i that's why okay i will pay attention to reviews like that when they talk about like the transphobia in some books or like those kinds of things that happen and so like i think that's why also reviews are important because like especially from marginalized communities like Reese, who was talking about the transphobia in that book. Me, I'm a cis, cis white woman. I would never have known. I would have never, I would have been it and been like, I have no idea what that means. Mm -hmm. Or like, I think it was, I forgot mm -hmm. which author, but they wrote YA books and it was like very anti Semitic. And so, and it had anti Semitic I tropes. know who you're talking about. And I forgot the name of the author. Like, that's how like out of my mind it is. But it's I've like been trying to sell their books for the longest now. <laughs> but it's like those things like I'm not religious, so I wouldn't get any of the like those little undertones. So I also think that's why reviews are also important is like having those also. <laughs> Sorry, that was kind of dumb, but do you know what I'm saying? Like. I think it's important to have reviews, mm -hmm. but I just hate doing reviews, <laughs> but I see the importance of them. Yeah. And like, look, like if I'm reviewing a book, I'm telling you verbally. And that's why like on my Instagram, I feel like that's where I do most of my reviews or, or book promotion, because like, that's where I'm like, you know, posting about it and I'm to it that's where I'm like really getting like I guess building hype for a book um for other people to read it but I don't know reviews are very very important I just don't do them this is really hard and, and it's not this is not to like be like oh you should totally do it well we know that we're not doing it and we don't care we know that we're supposed to add reviews to it's like hard though you have to build up stamina to do a review for every single book and find your own system to do it whether it's by adding the tropes or adding a favorite scene or breaking down characters or things like that then it it really depends on the reader but understand if you really enjoy a book and you want other readers to read it you have to review almost how you want to review read a review you know so don't add like three paragraphs going on and on about how like the world building is so good or something when you yourself want to know is there romance is there this is there angst is there you know ask yourself the questions that you want to know when you're going into a book and then just write a review based on that it's easier said than done it really is
I'm probably going to finish my next book and maybe do like an Instagram post review, which is like seven sentences, maybe at most included with all the tropes and the, and the chili peppers and the, the stars. And that'll be that. And the review won't be more than that. But the good thing is, is that you can always go back to it and like copy and paste or whatever. Um, but yeah. I, I like, I don't know. I just, because I have turned into such a mood reader, like I'm such a mood reader that like, if I'm not in the mood to read, I don't read. And it's been like that. Um, and I've just been so busy that like, mm-hmm. I've, um, I need to get back into audiobooks, but um, I just, I don't know why, but just reviews and like, even on TikTok, like reviews, I don't watch anymore. Um, I mean, I think those like the like one liner quotes are really what's popping right now. And like those kinds of things where it just talks about the tropes or like simple, like a scenario or something that's really like what grabs people in and what's make people to read. But I just, I never liked, I, I liked doing reviews for a while on TikTok, but they just never did well. Um, some of them, if they were, if I posted the review, like right when that book was really, really popular, that's when yeah. it did really well for like Promises and Pomegranates, it did really well. Um, and a couple others that I won't mention because I don't want to read those series anymore and don't support the authors. Um, so there are some that like do really well, but majority of them, if it's not trending on TikTok, I would post it because I was like an ARC reviewer, but I always felt like my Goodreads would do better. Mm-hmm. And I don't even have that many people on Goodreads. But yeah. yeah, it definitely was just like a mm, kind of thing where it's like, I don't know. I felt... And I, I've even fallen out of love of doing TikTok videos now. Where it's, mm-hmm. I, and Grace and I have talked about this, where it's like, it kind of gives me an ick now to post TikToks. And that's scary because I have a platform on TikTok and I've like create, I've like developed and tried to like make this uh, platform. And I'm just like, I am don't want to do this. Like, I'm just yeah. not in the mood to do this. And maybe that's because I'm not reading many books. Mm-hmm. So that's probably what it is. And when I get back and I start my new job and I kind of develop my routine again, um, I'll finally be able to like. You probably will. Yeah. I don't know. I just. I think um, TikTok is meant for like peaking interest in a book. Goodreads is more for like categorizing and cataloging what you mm-hmm. read when you read it. And I feel yeah. like Instagram is where like the really the reviews are given. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like that's well, how it's like progressed. Um, totally not intended for them to get that way, but that's just how I feel like it, it has become. Um, and I kind of like it like that. I mean, like there are like when I had COVID and I read um, Wicked Beauty and Talk Flirty to me. Um, and I was, I had COVID and I was like, I'm going to post about this on TikTok because I think people should read these two books because I enjoyed them. Uh, granted, it took me like a week to read both of them, but that's because I'm, I'm literally such a slow reader now. But when I was excited about a book, I just post about it. And I was like, F mm-hmm. it. I'm just going to post about these two books. Yeah. And then usually like if I post like, I don't post on Instagram either that much either, but when I do... I try to write like my review in the description as well. So if somebody does decide to read the description and then I do like the uh, rest of it on Goodreads. So you can like yeah, go to yeah, Goodreads yeah. and see it. But at least you get some like, what's that called? Snippet of what yeah. my thoughts oh, what are. And you get like the main, tr- yeah, you get the main tropes and stuff. Oh my gosh, I'm yeah. sweating. <laughs> it's so, so hot. <laughs> Because, I mean, like, reviews are, are meant to, like, encourage and, and help other readers find their next book. It's not really meant for, like, the authors to really look at it. 
or anyone else. But it's more like um, you're talking to another reader, essentially. It's just you have to write it out. And I feel like that's part of all of ours is that we're just like too lazy to go to another website to go and post a review. It's easier just to do a quick something yeah. than nothing at all. But yeah. And I don't know. It just... Did you hear that? That was my stomach. Oh, I definitely just like... My stomach just like, ugh. It's, 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 I've been working out <laughs> and so my body has been like starving and I need to eat. That's what mm. I don't eat enough. And so I get really hungry and my stomach decides to growl. Um, but yeah, but yeah. So reviewing books, my net galley, I can't even, I don't even look, I think my percentage is like 30 or something. It's below 50% where it's so bad. I think mine is like 40 something, 45. But it's because I have books that I have finished. I just haven't gone back to review them, which I probably will do today. But yeah, so those are the websites that everybody knows that you can review on. You could review on Instagram, on TikTok, on Goodreads. Heck, you could do it on Facebook if you have that. But the problem, the thing is, is that you want to make your reviews, um, like you want to make them, I guess, interesting enough to pique the reader's interest without swaying their their opinions on the book before they have even opened it and finding that balance in between it it's it's where you want to be and like there's also like other like storygraph and literal Mm -hmm. which i no matter how much like goodreads like platform how bad it is and how glitchy it is i still prefer that over those other ones and i don't know maybe i'm just old-fashioned but i just i like that if i'm on my kindle it automatically like syncs with it and stuff and if i add like a note and share it it automatically uploads to my goodreads and that's because it's owned by amazon but i don't know it just i don't know it just it feels better that way I'm a I, I I live in a capitalist society, okay? I'm a I, I Amazon just got me hooked. Which is sad. But they've got me hooked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just oh. so with going on that. Um you still update on your Goodreads what you're currently reading and things like that? Yeah. When I read, yeah, Are you I try to now? do it. No, <laughs> no there, yeah. there, there's a book that I have an audiobook for, and I use like my one month, like I got like a free Audible subscription, and I use that one month on that book, mm. and so I should read, and I know I need to read, and I have a Net Galley audiobook that I need to read, and I'm just like. I just I, I'm so busy and well, I know like you, you also were just sick so it's fine yeah like yeah I was, I was down <laughs> you were very fine yeah um yeah me I just finished like three novellas back to back I saw and you did they some were art really, for really them. Good. they were really really good I did artwork for them so two two of my uh, audiobooks, I mean, audiobooks, two novellas that I read were by Danielle Allen. They were Continuum and um, Truth or Dare. Truth or Dare was the first one that I read, mm-hmm. and it was recommended to me by Tanya, and I loved it. It was so quick, so easy, very spicy. It what they were both of those were friends to lovers so it helped with like the shorter story Mm -hmm. because they knew each other in in college and we're now just like rekindling that romance or that possible romance Mm -hmm. as adults and it was like really really good so yummy I loved them both 
very, very much. And then, because all of the Smut Squad has been reading Jessica Kane and a lot of their um, TikTok videos have been Jessica Kane and like you know, I've seen it on their stories and like you know on my For You page, I was just like, let me try Jessica Kane. And especially because like Tanya and Pauline and I, like the last time we went out, we were talking about like different um, books and different like authors. And then Je- Jessica King came up. And so she also had recommended to me one of uh, those Jessica King books, which apparently if you're reading Jessica King, you have to be very mindful that they are they have a peculiar taste to them, but they are very good. They read, they, you read them and you want to keep reading. They're super, super short. The last one, the one I read was hefty, which is the cutest of them. Apparently it is, um, <laughs> he's plus sized. He is a football player. He's like really, really big, really, really big in high school oh never mind <laughs> okay i thought they, you were talking about but, like NFL. But, but, but let me let me let me clear myself out with that one real quick they are both in their like last leg of senior year they're both 18 and so this is before they go to college and this is them like realizing like you are who i've been waiting for we're about to go to college and we're about to make our life. Mm-hmm. So let's start now. And it's a really cute epilogue because it's him in college and like him still with her and things like that. It's very, very cute. It has some questionable things, but realistic things, I think, when it comes to like scenes. Uh, super, super cute. I really enjoyed it. It was 62 pages. That's super, oh. super fast. Yeah. Oh, that's fast. Yeah. yeah. And so I feel like novellas are my like go-to now because like they are so easy to read, super, super fast. Um, and because they're like quick bites, I was able to review those three like nothing. Because they were they were so simple, so quick, so fast. Um, when it comes to longer things, it's harder, I think. My attention span is just not there. I literally like can't read a book if it's like over 400 pages at the moment. Bro, I have like maybe like three books that are like 400 to 800 page books. Dude, House of Sky and Breath, I have it. Ah, uh, I have the audiobook for it. I keep looking at it and it just like keeps like staring at me and it's just like it like it's staring me in the eyes and I'm just like, dude, okay. It scares me, it scares me. I'm like, heck no, I don't know when I'm gonna read that. And I see fan art for it and stuff. And I see low key spoilers. And then I'm like, I'm trying not to because I'm like, I wanna not. I don't care But then I do, but then I don't. Okay, I literally- I do care, I feel like I would do. So I talked about, I talked to Grace, I think yesterday about this. Was it yesterday we talked or the day before? Maybe. Yesterday. Talked yesterday. It was yesterday because we, we talked about today, mm-hmm. but I was talking with Grace and I was like, I am a toxic person. You are. Because, and here's why I'm toxic is I love my books. I, I like when I, when I love a story, I love it passionately and make it my whole personality now when other people love that book and make it their personality i hate them <laughs> and i get so annoyed when i see that concept. you're very um what do you call it um territorial I'm, ve- I'm very territorial and i'm like nobody should be reading this book like when zodiac academy became like really popular and like people started making like fan art for it and stuff and i was like no 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 this is supposed to be undercover. This is supposed to be a secret. I'm like, oh. and I, I know how toxic that sounds. But like, I don't know, maybe it's just my childhood trauma that like makes me want to keep things to myself. And I'm a very like, like mm. contrary to like belief. Like, even though like I have a podcast and I share a lot on here, 
I'm very closed off. It takes me a lot to trust people. And so I have very few friends. I don't have a lot of friends. Um, but yeah, I definitely, well, my mic just definitely, I heard that. Um, but yeah, I'm a toxic person. And I, and so whenever I see the house of sky and breath, mm-hmm. anybody make any videos about it and stuff, I'm like, mm, pass. I'm like, mm, I should have read it when it came out. And not have waited. I will read it. I just don't know when. I think the downfall of it was that Akasif came a year. It was like two years after House and Breath. Earth and Blood. Earth and Blood. Yeah. So I think that was kind of the downfall where I kind of lost interest. I have been seeing a few like little scenes and one liners and things like that. I did not know that they were SJM. Or like Crescent City books until like I looked in the comments. I'm like, oh okay. It's Crescent City. So maybe, maybe I don't know when I'll get to that. Who knows? But right now I'm reading a proposal they can't refuse by uh Natalie Ganya. And it's really cute. It's it's very cute. You know, wh- this is not a complaint, but it is kind of a sad thing. Is that I'm half Nicaraguense mm-hmm. and uh, Nicaragua, Nicaraguan, for those who don't know, mm-hmm. for those who are white or don't speak like Spanish. Me. Like me. For those I'm people who are not Mexican. Hispanic, <laughs> Nicaragüense is Nicaragua, and Nicaragua is um, near El Salvador in um, Central America. And it's a super, super poor country, as are most. Um, but a lot of Latinx romances that I have been reading or have seen are either um, Puerto Rican romances mm-hmm. or they are um, Brazilian and or Mexican. I've seen a couple or Mexican, Cuban. which is cute. Cuban, yeah, Cuban PR kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, that's true. Yeah, they're same region. Yeah. Um. And I'm kind of sad that it, there aren't any Nicaraguan romances, but then I have to realize it's a different country or whatever. I would love to read a Nicaraguan romance. I have looked; there aren't any. Maybe it's are, your opportunity. Or if they are, they're like fiction. They're not nonfiction. Is that my opportunity? Who knows? Maybe I'm a maybe I'll be a ghost writer for someone. Maybe I'll I'll write novellas and you guys won't even know it. I'm, I'm a, one day I'm gonna be reading a book. I'm a novella. I'm gonna be talking about it, and you guys aren't even gonna realize that I was the one who wrote it. That's how, that that's what it's gonna be. We're gonna we're gonna put that into the universe and let that start working. Who knows when? But that's that's what that's the goal. Dude. And that'll be a Nicaraguense romance. Literally, okay. like ghost ghostwriters, you can get a ghostwriter to write a whole book for you, and like you work with them on like you tell them like this is what I want the plot to be. So like people who can't write, me, they can literally like work with a ghostwriter, and they will like write the entire book for you based off of like your ideas and stuff, and you like Bro. work with them. I'm like, you know who who would be a, a really good ghostwriter? I mean, like, not a ghostwriter, but you know who's really good at romance plots in real life that I know? Yeah. My brother. Surprisingly, surprisingly, Jacob and I, we get into these conversations, right? We get into these long, long, super long discussions. And they usually start off with, like, these what if questions. And these what ifs usually have to do with like, what if you had like a superpower, what would it be? And then how would that work? And how would your life be? And like all of these questions and basically start building like a whole world around that question. Mm -hmm. And then um, a couple of days ago, we were talking about um, Nickelodeon kids, Cartoon Network kids and Disney Channel kids depending on who you were 
would dictate how you would be around other kids. And he and I work with kids. And so we use like camp as a scenario, Mm -hmm. summer camp. Mm -hmm. And how Nickelodeon, like how those three archetypes of kids would act when doing multiple things. So if you grew up watching TV and what shows you usually gravitated towards dictated what you fell into. Now, if you were a Disney Channel kid, you were pretty basic. You um, were very, uh, for all who now, like, okay, behaved, didn't really cause problems, did talk a lot, but for the most part, no, no problems. You got very excited about things. If you were a Cartoon Network kid, you were kind of closed off. You were, re- you were cool. You didn't really de- dive into things. You just kind of laid back and did your own thing. Uh, Nickelodeon kids are super hyper, super crazy, super weird. They are the kids that you just kind of look at them and you're like, are you okay? And that's how we, w- we went on a whole discussion about how those kids would be, how they would be at different field trips, how they would be at lunchtime, all of these things. Do you know what kind of kid you are, Maggie? What kind of kid am I? I'm asking you, like, wh- what do you think that you are? I know what I am. And Jacob told me before I even like was just like, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I'm a Cartoon Network kid. He's like, hell no, you're not. You are I feel, a Disney kid. I feel like I'm a Nickelodeon kid. Oh, 100% you are. 100% you are a, Disney, a Nickelodeon kid. And there's Nickelodeon kids that could be Cartoon Network kids, but I feel like you have to grow out of your Nickelodeon face and into a Cartoon Network kid. But I like, the funny thing is, is I'm a Nickelodeon kid, but I only watched like Nickelodeon and Disney Channel when I was at my grandparents' house because I didn't have Yeah, like, and cable. if you didn't have, and if you didn't have, you were um, like the other like channels, like WB, Boomerang, um, PBS, um, you know, those type of shows. But those type of shows also fell into one of those three main archetypes because those shows were later bought or were from the same studios. So they fell into it. Like WB, Boomerang, those are all Cartoon Network kids because they were the same shows. They were just reruns or whatever. But anyways, we went on like this whole like two hour discussion about this. And then we went into like how we were growing up, like when we were around teens. And then he talked about like what which couples would date and so he was like oh cartoon network would definitely date uh disney channel girl and disney channel girl would love it but then they would break up at the end of the summer next summer he went on this whole story and then he was just like oh there's like a a new cartoon network girl that comes in and she's really cool with him and but he doesn't know if he's gonna go back with the disney channel girl or go on to this new girl and it was basically like this whole storyline that he built around and he's just like there's two possible opportunities for this if he goes with Disney Channel girl later on he's gonna break up with her and then he's gonna go back to Cartoon Network girl and then they'll go off and they'll become people and they'll make it that couple will make it but if he goes to Cartoon Network girl it's not gonna work out And then he's going to go back with Disney Channel Girl years later, and then they'll rekindle romance and all these things. And I'm looking at him while he's like giving me this whole explanation. And I'm just like, you know what? You could be a romance author based on this whole idea that you have and like this whole story that you do. You, You do a really good job. And I'm like, you do a really good job with romances and relationships because you are pretty good at like, seeing how girls would react and how guys would react to them and all these things so he would be a good writer will he write (laughs) no but he's really good at it and so yeah I don't know why I went into that whole explanation but yeah there are good guys out there that could write romance okay I mean like (sighs) 
I mean, there are some guys who write romance, and I've seen them on TikTok. Yeah. I just haven't read any of their books. Like, no hate to men, but all hate to men. But, like, men authors, you can tell when a book is written by a man. Like, you can tell. Like, I think there was, like, a TikTok, and it was, like, you could tell when an artist is a man mm-hmm. versus when it's a woman. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the books that I've read that have been written by man usually end up to be problematic. Or I get so bored of it and I don't relate to it at all that I'm just like, I don't see the point of reading this anymore. I haven't read a book written by a man in like quite some time. Oh yeah, I stopped reading books written by men. And, and it like, wasn't that I was like trying, like making the conscious decision. It's just like... It just, I mean, romance isn't a big genre for men. Yeah, that too. So I could see how it like doesn't work out, but... Ada, if you are listening to this, you still need to read that romance book so we can have you on to the podcast. Because literally, I gave him that in like December of last year. I don't think he's even read it. I can text him right now. And I'm going to see him. I'll be like, hey, have you read that book I gave you? Because I'm pretty sure he read a little bit, but never finished. Hi, Ada. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i have to read that book too so we'll it's good i love happens. the series there's a new one coming out in december i think hmm. well yeah uh, <laughs> um sorry okay i'm, I'm so, so wait, sorry guys this episode has been like <laughs> it, we've gone all over the place you know what it is too is that I'm now working again, like, mm-hmm. and working a lot, and then you're busy with all of your things. So it's been mm-hmm. quite some like adjustment to get to. We promise to get back to regularly scheduled episodes, but it's just you know time by August. Time. By August, we will have like a definitive like this is what we do because I literally am starting my new job. Two weeks later, we go to DC for a polycon. Mm-hmm. So it's literally like the next month is literally just like we're gonna be busy so we are and then like you know things happen life happens so but we will have episodes coming out the, this couple next weeks we do have a couple of announcements we are going to end the episode right here um a couple of announcements is that um for our um shop we are doing a summer launch for uh, a couple of new items that we have they will be posted on our instagram next saturday so you'll be able to check them out and that i believe that that is going to be the 25th of june So you'll be able to see all of the things that we have that we will be listing. And then some of them are inspired by It Happened One Summer. And some are just like some cute. um, Classics that we'll have forever in our shop. uh, Some cute items, yeah, that we'll just have in our shop just to have. Um, We will open our shop a week after next. So in about two weeks, we will reopen our shop with... uh, summer items and yeah okay would y'all let me know y'all can like dm us on instagram but would y'all be interested in some of the authors that we interviewed last year to interview again this year and do like a year later update let us know if you would be interested in it there's one author that i really want to do it with who's having a new release at the end of june and so i think she would be a good author to have on but let us know let us know if there's mm-hmm. any authors you want us any books you want us to read in review i know we just had an episode of how we hate doing reviews but review episodes are fun i think review episodes that we do are fun because we can talk about the book finally together um, mm-hmm. grace is like yeah no fuck i'm that. looking <laughs> at my bookshelf to see what uh, some books that we can do but yeah um, as always, you can find us on Instagram. You can find us on um, TikTok. You can check out our shop. Check out our, our bookstagrams. And just, our TikToks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hope you guys don't burn out this summer. It is, you know, school's out and you guys are going to be able to burn through your TBR. But, uh, yes. you know, pace yourself. You don't want to burn out. 
and not read again and go into the reading slump. <laughs> don't don't become me. Yeah. Well, don't, don't, don't thank you. Me. Um. Yeah. We love you well, guys. Thank, yeah. A thank you bit. for coming, and we'll see you next week. Yeah. Bye, guys. See you. Bye.